If you have your Bibles, <clears throat> excuse me, we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And uh, while you're turning there, I will remind you of our upcoming missions conference. And uh, we're very close now, about almost exactly uh, it'll be four weeks from tomorrow. And so uh, we're getting close, and uh, hopefully uh, you've been praying for these men that's going to preach for us. Gospel of Luke chapter 8, beginning in verse 41. The Bible says, And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet, and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, <clears throat> the people thronged him. And a woman, having an issue of blood 12 years, which spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood was staunched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and thou and, and thronged thee and pressed thee, and they and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people that for what cause she had touched him and how, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. And while yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we give you great glory for the book that lays before us this evening. God, we thank you for those that come with uh, ears that desire to hear thy truth one more time this side of eternity, and we praise you for that. God, we pray that you would allow us to use whatever days that we may have left for your glory and for your honor, and that we would be used to preach the gospel in the days that are ahead. God, we pray for the lost that are here among us even tonight, God, that you would reach out to them, that you would uh, uh, draw them unto yourself, Lord, and that you would save them uh, for your own glory and for your own honor. And we pray these in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture, and we're going to review part of them. But I want you to see the advice in 49, verse 49, of the world was not to trouble the master. The problem is over. Satan's won. She's dead. There's nothing left to do. Now, that's what the world would have you to believe. And they would have you to give up. And they would have you to throw in the towel. But for me and myself, I'll trouble the master until the day I die. I'll go before him with my needs. I'll go before him with the lost people that I have in my family. And I'll continue to continually lay it out until I go home to be with the Lord. I will trouble the master. And, and this is the wonderful thing about an ever-living, ever, ever always able master is you're really no trouble to him. But I believe he's really, really uh, lifted up and glorified when we do go and trouble the master. And that's certainly what we should be doing. Now back in 41 where we started our text, the Bible says, And behold, there came a man named Jairus, or Jairus, I've heard it say both ways, I think it's Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. Now, a synagogue is a little bit different than the temple. Uh, there was a synagogue in most little Jewish towns, and the temple was the big meeting place down at Jerusalem where they went annually uh, for the sacrifice. But 
Uh, being over a synagogue was very important. They had a, a co at least a partial copy of the Word of God, and they had people to preach to, and they had people to go in and pray with them, and that was his job. It was a notable job, but I, I want you to see that despite his religious situation, he had no power when it came to disease. Uh, it's good to be right and well aligned with this book, but listen, there, there's no benefit if you're not really saved. There's no benefit to it if you don't know the writer of the book to know about the book. And so we find that Jairus was probably in this situation, but God had opened and revealed it to him enough that he knew Jesus was of a particular kind. Right. He knew Jesus had something the others did not. He knew that Jesus was a resource. You know, we live in a very, a very troublesome day, and you better know that Jesus is not only a resource, he is the resource. Amen. Right. Uh, uh, when everything else goes goes under, Jesus will yet be standing. And understanding his character and his ability is everything to get you in the day that we live. Now I want you to see he acknowledges Christ because the Bible says he fell down at his feet. Now that was an unusual thing for a Jew to do because Jews didn't do things like that. Uh, they would go down to the temple. So he was acknowledging that, that Jesus had some ability, Jesus had power that he did not have. Uh, most people do not do like Jairus today. Uh, I acknowledge clearly that God has power that I don't even understand. And, and that is exactly where we ought to be as well. Now notice in verse 42, now he had only, now he had only one daughter about 12 years of age. Now the Lord Jesus is fixing to start working on two problems at the same time, but I want you to know that their origin was about the same time. The little girl was 12 years old and she was dying, and the woman with the issue of blood had been sick with it for 12 years. Uh, think about 12 years. You know, uh, I was thinking about that as I was studying and preparing. 12 years ago, I was 40, and uh, was one month away from having my brain cut off. 12 years ago. You think about what's changed in 12 years ago. I was thinking about Sarah. Sarah was 12 years ago, she was 14. Just really, just started high school. 12 years goes by like that, and lots and lots of things change in 12 years. 12 years ago, I had no grandchildren, now I have four. 12 years, a lot of things has changed. Uh, 12 years ago, uh, my sons were still at home. Now they're married with families of their own. 12 years, a lot of stuff can change. Yeah. Now, can you imagine this? these two individuals dealing with a malady for 12 years and still with, dealing with it today? So a 12-year-old girl that was dying and a woman in verse 43, uh, 43 had an issue of blood for 12 years. Also, I want you to see that the woman in uh, verse 40 through 43 had spent all that she had. Every dime, every nickel, everything she had had gone into treating this disease and nothing whatsoever was the better. You know what? Uh, we spend a way too much time and money on things that would not get us any good whatsoever. You know, when me and Donna were young, we were talking about this the other day, we always wanted a two-story house. We saw God's goodness in not giving it to us because now neither one of us could make it up the steps if we had it. So uh, God's good, right? And, and, but, you know, this is the thing. What difference does it make? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really believe that trailer's going to outlast us. And that's been, that's been plenty of living. It's kept the water off me for 27 years. That's good. Why, why do we want more? It's the nature of our flesh. Mm -hmm. If you get a four-bedroom, you'll want a five. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so we see that this woman had spent all that she had, everything that she that she could, everything she had, and was absolutely no better than when she uh, started. Now, I also want you to see that uh, he promised Jairus that he was coming in verse forty-one, verse forty-four. 
came behind him, meaning the woman with the issue of blood, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. That's the hemline is how we would say it. And immediately her issue of blood was staunched. Now, in verse, the verse preceding that, she goes, she says to herself, I, I know if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Can you imagine that faith? Now, I, I'm here and I'm brave enough and honest enough as I can be to say it, I know I don't have that kind of faith. I wish I did. And I pray for it that my faith will grow. But I, I think the, the whole premise of, of this text in regard to this woman is faith. Um, the Bible says this, if you have faith, it's measured by the smallest mustard yeah. seed. That he would do great things. Um, I have to believe in the years we live that faith is almost absent in most believers. You know, a lot of people say, well, you have to have faith to be saved. Well, I, I'm not sure that I believe that because he saves you. He, he implants that in you. Uh, so having confidence in the person of Christ really isn't much to do with salvation. It's him imputing life unto you. So faith is something that you develop. Faith is something that life teaches you, and it should be our desires to gain more and more of it. So as this little woman was going in behind him, she said, I just get the edge of his garment. You know what? You want, you want to see a revival? Listen, church, the days of people being packed up and packed out and sitting folding chairs on the side, listen, they're gone. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I don't want to be discouraging to you. But I will be honest with you. Those days are gone because the last days can't come unless there be a great falling away first. And then and then the Lord Jesus will Christ will come. But I will give you this confidence that we can have faith till he does come. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we can enjoy his presence until he does come. But we will not enjoy his presence with a lack of faith. You ever wonder why he don't always meet with us? Well, I'm telling you why. It's we don't have faith. Remember what the apostle said? Why could we not cast him out? Mm -hmm. He said, because you have no faith. He says to the Peter, if he's sinking to the bottom, oh, you have little faith. You know, uh, when I think about that, it, it makes me nervous. It, it makes me ashamed to think about numerating my own faith, don't you? To think about how much do I really have? How much faith do I have in the confidence and the ability of my God? And certainly his abilities are endless. So this little woman said, all I need to do is touch that much and I'm going to be healed. All these other doctors have spelled me, but I know healing will come from him. And when she did it, that's exactly what happened. Verse 45. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and many and they that were with him said with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee. Sayest thou who touched me? And so I want you to see that the touching was not the issue. It was the faith. Because see, the crowd was such of a mob. You know, uh, right here I just touched Joe and bumped into him a little bit. That has nothing to do with faith, does it? Mm -hmm. It, it was an accident. It was because, so the, the crowd, but one out of that massive amount of people, one person came with faith. One little woman came with enough confidence in the person of Christ that she knew she could just touch it. That all would be well. You know, that's how I want to approach the Lord God. Is that not you? That's how I want to behold the Master, that, that He's the problem solver. And that I stand in need of him. And so we find that this, uh, this woman with the issue of blood, she does just that. Virtue goes out from our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 46. And Jesus said, somebody have touched me. For I perceive, I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. Now that is his healing, uh, his healing ability. You know, it always amazes me. And the... Uh, in the 33 and a half years of the Lord's ministry, how combined flesh and spirit really were. Because sometimes, just like this, he, he felt the virtue go out, but he didn't know who it was. 
And then there's another time he reveals himself as God, and he was calling one of the disciples, and he said, I saw you this morning sitting under the tree, even though he'd been nowhere. See, uh, our Lord Jesus is a watcher, is he not? He, he knows what's going on all the time. And, and so we find as he is in this situation, he said, I, I love the birth to go out. Somebody came to me in faith. Verse 47. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him, and she declared unto him, unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was immediate and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Now I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, she had enough confidence in the person of Christ that her faith propelled her to do something. I don't see that much among God's people anymore. Do you? Uh, not enough confidence to, to actually put them into action to share the gospel, to preach on a street corner, uh, to share a track with someone that you love dearly, anything whatsoever at all that can be done, that confidence, that faith in God's people is just about gone. And we, we need that, do we not? Do you, do you believe that he's able? I don't believe he's done saving people. And the reason I don't believe he's done saving people, I believe if he was done, we'd be gone. If you believe in particular redemption, you have to believe that someday the last one is going to be saved. That's as much true as any other part of particular redemption or a specific atonement. One day the last one has to be the last one, right? And we're out of here. And, and, and so we find that in this situation, she had enough confidence to motivate her to action. And, and certainly we should be in the same situation tonight that if we have that much faith, it will motivate us to do things. Verse 49. And while he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. Now you think about when things look really really hopeless. Uh, you don't trouble the master? A few times in my life that uh, I had to kind of think about that myself. And uh, one, one time in particular, like I said 12 years ago this year, and I guess it was in the earlier part of the year, maybe April, March, April, something there, I've had a number of seizures and being done. I was just taking our routine appointment with Dr. Singh, and we had Andrew and Callie with us. And Donna stayed out there and uh, with the kids so they wouldn't be disruptive. And I went back, and uh, Dr. Singh looked at me and said, Literally, I have nothing left to offer but surgery. I said, and you know, that kind of, you know, I don't have much sense anyway. And when they start about cutting on your brain, you know, that's, that, that's a whole nother level. And uh, took me a little bit off guard. And then, you know, almost immediately, the Lord just gave me a piece about it. And it's gone well. Uh, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I didn't know this. So I'm not having a seizure every day either. So uh, God's been good. But... The way I look at it, that was a test of my faith. Do you believe me or do you not believe me? Because see, the only time you can really know that is when it gets down to the point of impacting your life. And when it's impacting your day-to-day -day life, that's a test of your faith. Mm -hmm. That's a test of what you believe and just what you say you believe. So Jairus had the same situation here. He... he he put someone, someone presented a reality to him that could not be broken, at least in man's idea. Somebody put a situation that they thought that Jesus was too small to help. They did not understand the power of the Almighty. Verse 50, but when Jesus heard it, he answered saying, fear not, 
Believe on me, and she shall be made whole. Now, I want you to see two, two directions. The first one is fear not. <laughs> you know, you think about how many times that was the direction of the Lord in His own personal ministry. Out there in the middle of the Sea of Gennesaret, it is I, be not afraid. And that's when old Peter got the power to say, Lord, bid me to come unto you. See, when you put the fear aside, faith grows. And when, when, when fear grows, faith shrinks. And so a lot of times our, our situation is this, is that we simply do not have enough faith to trust the Lord Jesus Christ in, in worldly matters, essentially. And fear will cripple you in any situation you're in. Fear will cripple you even in this current place that we live. If you don't think you can do it, you know what? You never will. That's a type of fear. And if, uh, if we don't believe our God is able, we'll live paralyzed, insignificant Christian lives throughout all our time. We do not need to let fear cripple us. And certainly that's uh, uh, the first advice that the Lord Jesus gave Jairus, don't fear. And then he said, believe only. That's a challenge. Uh, you know, uh, it never ceases to amaze me, in and of myself at least. You know what? Even today, 50, going on 53, I believe this book entirely. I still believe it from cover to cover. And I, I truly can say that. But when it comes down to the here and now, that's when my faith is tried. When the doctor looks at you and sadly shakes his head and says, there's nothing more I can do. That don't try this book. That tries me. Amen. And uh, that, that, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where we get down to where we're living at. And Jairus just heard his only child was dead, and it was a daughter. And uh, uh, Brother Junior and Adam understands this. And Adam, if you don't, you will. There's nothing like a son to have. But there's a very close bond between the daughter and her father. And I don't quite understand it. I can just say that it's there. And when it gets down to your daughter, that's about it, isn't it? That, that's, that's a difficult thing. And so he says, he, he, the Lord Jesus actually asked almost an unbelievable thing from Jairus. He says, just be calm, don't you fear, and believe, believe, believe. Verse 51. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. Now, I want you to see people that uh, live faithful, who have faith, has experiences where the faith can grow. Now, they're not always pleasant experiences. Think about Peter. He was the one allowed to go in. He was one of them. And... Uh, Remember back at the first part of Jesus' ministry and Peter's mother-in-law was laying down there sick and the Lord went and healed her and she was feeling so good she got up and started serving other people. He'd seen that. He'd seen the 5,000 men beside women and children eat from, the kid, from a kid's lunch. He'd seen it done. And now he was going to see an amazing thing. He was going to go into this uh, woman's house and see the daughter be raised back to life. See, you don't get experiences like that by living the routine. You get experiences like that by following the Lord Jesus carefully in what you do. And, and uh, people are day, well, why don't things happen like they did in the Bible times? Well, a lot of it is our faith. Right. Uh, and uh, because our God hasn't changed, and so it has to be us. Verse 52. And all wept and bewailed her, many of the little girl that died, but he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. Now, you think about that. 
and being a nurse, it's very hard for me sometimes to get a hold of these. The shortly dead don't bother me as much as my Lazarus who was stinking. Because uh, I'm I've done CPR people on people. I, 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 I used to get a letter from Brother Brixby every year thanking, uh, thanking me and Donna for trying to help him when he fell out. But you know what? It wasn't what uh, Donna and I did. It was the God behind it. And the only thing I would say for Clarence Brixby, it wasn't his appointed time. Because if it had been, he would have died. But I want you to see when this little girl here was long years before what they even knew what CPR was. And dead then was dead. And he let these individuals in to see a miraculous state. Then those that stood around him started laughing. You know, uh, if we're not very careful, we'll do the same thing. Laugh at the ability of our God. You know, uh, I don't know what the Lord's going to do, but I know He's able. If it's sickness, if it's the saving of a soul, whatever it is, our God is able, and we need to we need to go before Him in trouble and say, Lord, this is still bothering me. My daughter is still lost. My uh, my situation ain't work ain't what it ought to be. Just troubling and say, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. My faith is wavering. Help me. Allow my confidence to grow in you. Trouble the master. Bother him. Uh, bring it to him again and again and again betimes, saying, I need help from you. And that's exactly where we ought to be. The world's going to laugh at you. But the Lord Jesus is able. And he put all them out, meaning all the mockers, all the disputers, all the people that were making fun of them. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and say, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again. Now, for the spirit to come again, it had to be gone. She was graveyard dead. And because of the goodness of God, he brought her back, made a rise, and immediately she received life. You see, um, what we really need to do is evaluate how much we trust, how much we believe the God of the Bible. Uh, does your faith ever waver? I know it does. Mine does. Everybody does. But... Uh, our confidence should grow, shouldn't it? Mine's taught me that. Um, everybody says, oh, give me more faith. Well, you better know what you're asking for when you, when you say that. Because uh, you get faith by the sifting school. Uh, the heart of the meat is after the wheat is sifted, right? And that's exactly what... <laughs> When you want faith, that's what you have to go through. There'll be some difficult times. There'll be some hardships. But in that, uh, certainly your faith will grow. Um, trouble the master. Every time you think about it, every time you think about your children, your grandchildren, trouble the master. Go before him and ask him one more time. Uh, uh, rehearse it once again. And uh, I believe he will bless us greatly for that.